We got a chance to speak to the writer-director of the brand new movie, Boston Strangler. Check out our conversation with Matt Ruskin. Hey, congratulations on the movie. I think one of the hardest things to do when telling a story like this is to create this sense of tension in what is essentially a process story, because journalism, as I very well know, can be a completely mundane experience. And uh, I think a handful of movies do it really well. All the President's Men, Spotlight, Zodiac, The Post. And I think you pull it off as well in Boston Strangler. And I was wondering if you could talk me through making journalism exciting for film. Um, thank you. Well, I'm glad you felt that way. And I, I definitely watched those films that you just referenced quite a bit. But yeah, you know, this is a movie about the first time that a serial killer really terrorized an American city in the era of mass media where people were, you know, reading about it in one of the seven newspapers in Boston. So I really wanted to create that feeling of of anxiety and fear that was hanging over the city and the tension and the obstacles that these women faced while they were reporting on the story. And so some of that, you know, from a very practical sense was, um, you know, camera movement and where to place the camera, sometimes choosing to be in a more voyeuristic position or uh, sometimes, you know, a slow camera movement can just create a lot of tension. And then w- and with the depiction of the violence in the film, it was really important for me to not not glorify any of this. Um, so much of the violence happens off screen, which I think also adds to the tension where there's this faceless killer. And, and sometimes hearing the horror of this could be, you know, more affecting than than actually seeing it. Oh, I that was exactly you preempted my next question, which was that decision to not show almost any of the violence, like even in the opening sequence, we hear it and then we see silhouettes Mm -hmm. almost. And I think that was very, very cool. Um, Making this must have sent you down all kinds of rabbit holes. God knows watching it did for me. And I'm curious if there was any point when you were like, I can solve this. I got this. (laughs) Um, Well, I'm going to leave that for people to see when they watch the film. You know, one of the really disturbing things about this case is that nobody was ever tried or convicted for any of these crimes. You know, we present a theory of the case in the film. And I and I hope, you know, I don't I don't want to give anything away for potential viewers. But I think that one of the really fascinating things about this story was that the political leaders and the people in charge of the investigation really wanted this to go away. And once the murders had stopped, they just wanted, um, you know, a political solution rather than to really, um, you know, get justice for these women. Yeah, Um, Matt, I think I'm all out of time, but thank you so much for yours and congratulations to the movie. I had a blast. Also, can I just say... An hour and 48 minutes. Perfect. Beautiful. Awesome. That's great. I miss, <laughs> I had the best food of my life was in Kuala Lumpur. Oh, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, we do great food. The best. <laughs> a safe little world is just delusion. Check out Boston Strangler when it premieres March 17th on Disney Plus Hotstar. Sound off in the comments below once you've seen it. Don't forget to watch our other interviews. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family. You know what to do.